In this video, I'm gonna go over my hunt for the perfect cookware that we replaced that pesky Hexclad cookware with that we bought less than two years ago. And spoiler, yes, Hexclad will eventually fall apart on you. Whether you use it exactly how it's marketed or even if you baby it with a pair of white gloves. How do each of the top brands recommended by viewers like you stack up against each other in the following categories? Construction, manufacturing place of origin, price, company history, reputation, weight, ergonomics, and temperature limits. What has our experience been like after switching from Hexclad to stainless steel? And yes, we still use our cast iron and carbon steel pans. How we care for our new cookware with the intention of making them last forever. And what are the main reasons why we as a family decided to go with heritage steel cookware versus all of the other reputable brands that, that you recommended in that previous video? And lastly, I reached out to Heritage Steel. Actually, Danny Hen, the grandson of the creator of the company, messaged me back and we chatted a little bit on email and we even chatted on the phone. And he answered a few questions that I think might be important for your decision in finding the right cookware. So stay tuned to the very end to hear Danny's answers to my questions about cookware and their cookware and finding the right cookware for you. And you'll also learn why the year 1983 is important to me and it's important to Heritage Steel as well. Now I know this is a long one, but I've packed it with a ton of information for you that I think is important. It was important for me in making my decision. So I hope that you find value in the content that I put together for you. There are chapters below if you wanna fast forward to the different areas that you are interested most in, but I encourage you to watch the entire thing. Maybe you'll find out something that you didn't know before, or maybe you might find something that could be of interest to you that you weren't thinking of before. Let's begin. About a month ago, I posted a video called, I can't recommend Hexclad cookware anymore. And in that video, I mentioned how almost all of the claims made by Hexclad were pretty much just marketing. But when did we decide that lying is marketing? That's, that's a tough one to figure out. When did that begin? I'll ask you, put me in me in the comments of when the first marketing lies began. Obviously, I'm just being silly here. Now you probably, you may have purchased Hexclad cookware already, and it's okay. You can make it last as long as you can. Don't use metal utensils on it, even though they say you can and that it's safe. It's not. Don't stick them in the dishwasher. Don't cook with them at high temperatures and you'll pretty much be fine. If you can get three to five years out of them, I'd say you're probably winning the battle of most from of what most people are experiencing, which is a little bit less than two years. But, and this is a big but, that non-stick PTFE coating, Teflon coating that they put on there will eventually wear off. And the tricky part here is you don't actually notice when it starts to become unviable. You may eventually notice that it peeled off or flaked off or chipped off or scratched off, yes but PTFE or Teflon can start to degrade without you even seeing it. That's the misleading part and somewhat dangerous part of it all. And when that happens, because it's not an if, it's a when, when that happens, I hope that they replace them for you with their lifetime warranty. They did for me, but enough about Hexclad. In that video, I also asked you for your recommendations of the cookware you love to cook with. Primarily stainless steel. A lot of people answered carbon steel and stainless steel and cast iron, which is great. I have both of those other, th those other things. They are wonderful to cook with. But stainless steel adds a little bit more versatility to your kitchen and to the things that you can cook. So thank you so much for responding. There were so many comments in the video and the comments still keep rolling and I appreciate every single one of them. Even the negative ones, thank you. Other brands that viewers like you recommended were Made In Cookware, All Clad, and Demire. Those are probably the top three. And then a bunch of other people said Heston Culinary, which is beautiful, beautiful cookware, incredible company. They were more than I wanted to spend on the cookware that I'm comparing here. And there were a bunch of other even more inexpensive brands as well. And I appreciate all of those too. I looked into them before making my decision. So after spending about two weeks researching and quite honestly going down a very steep rabbit hole, the clear winner for us was Heritage Steel. But let's talk about each of them briefly in the different categories that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. And links to all of these companies' websites are below in the description. I hope you check them out when you're doing your own research, if you haven't already decided uh, the brand that you want. If you have, tell me in the comments 
What's your favorite? Let's talk about construction. I'm gonna start with Heritage Steel, their Titanium series. Now that's not what I ended up with. I ended up with their Eater series, but let's start with the Titanium series, which was their first. Now that's made with a Titanium Strengthened 316 Ti Steel. This series features a mirror polish and a five ply construction. In a nutshell, this means that the pans are made of five layers of metal. The steel is reinforced with titanium and molybdenum. <laughs> I'm saying that wrong. Molybdenum. molybdenum. That's, it's actually fun to say. To maximize corrosion resistance properties. It's especially adept at resisting salt pitting. And you can avoid salt pitting by warming your water up first and then adding your salt to your pot if you're cooking spaghetti, things like that. But that metal is also good for resisting leaching and other types of corrosion. In Danny's own words, it's a specialty product. That brings me to Heritage Eater series. Now, Heritage Steel partnered with Eater, which I'll get to later in Danny's comments. The Eater line is meant to be a bit cheaper and easier to make. Its 304 steel surface is less expensive to source and its brush surface is less labor intensive. But these are still five layers thick, just like the Titanium series. But like I said, uses that 304 steel like a lot of the other brands do in this comparison. Made in, they use five layers of metals, just like Heritage Steel. All clad D5, five layers of metal. Now they do have others like graphite core and copper core, but I'm not talking about those in this video. This is strictly the stainless steel lines. All clad D3, as you may have guessed, it is three layers of metal. Now DeMeyer has a bunch of different levels of their stainless steel pans. For this comparison, I'm adding two of them. This one is called Industry. The Industry line is five layers thick but uses a patented treatment on the surface of the pans called Sylvanox, with Sylvanox. And that resists fingerprints and is supposed to make it easier to clean. So that's pretty cool. Demeyer also has an essentials line. It is also five layers of metal thick. Uh, no patented treatments like, their other, like the industry line. And like I mentioned earlier, they offer even higher end lines. And for this video, I'm gonna compare the pricing of the 10 piece sets for all of these brands. Now I figured that the 10 piece set was probably included the most amount of cookware that would be utilized in pretty much every kitchen. You, get, you can get into some specialty pans with all of these companies, uh, but the 10 piece usually comes with the lids, the right frying pans, the right sauce pans, the right skillets, that kind of stuff. So that's why I chose to price out the 10 piece selection. Now on Hexcloud's website, they don't offer a 10 piece selection. They do have a 12 piece though. And that 12 piece goes for $1,140 retail. It is currently on sale for $699. So I don't know what kind of budget you're in for, for your cookware, but Heritage Steel and All Clad D3 seem to be right around the same price of $599 or $649 for those sets. All Clad D3 is the three ply. Eater series is the five ply. Both have a lifetime warranty, which I'll get into next. Now, all of the brands, including Hexclad, which did honor their warranty for me, have a lifetime warranty, except Allclad, who has a limited lifetime warranty. Let me get into that. Now, this is actually a bit more nuanced than I really expected it to be. So here's a quick breakdown. Heritage Steel's lifetime warranty protects lifetime for manufacturer defects, and those will re be replaced for free. If your pans are destroyed by fire, flood, storm, earthquake, misuse, commercial application, this is, this is a pretty good one here, neglect, accidents, or if they're altered in such a way that the performance is affected, it will be replaced for half the current retail price plus shipping and handling. This is the only company that offers this on their warranty for those things. The rest of them will not cover the warranty for those scenarios, and none of them mention commercial application. So if you're a restaurant or if you're a small restaurant or whatever, and you want high quality stainless steel cookware, you could do this. And when they, you begin to destroy them, like every restaurant does, you will get them for half price. Not bad. Now all clad and made in are pretty much the same in this, in this category. They both offer a lifetime warranty on manufacturer's defects, but if your cookware changes in appearance, damage, or is stained as a result of normal wear and tear, use of metal utensils, so scratched up, or the use of a dishwasher. This one is kind of interesting. All of those things are not covered under the manufacturer's lifetime warranty. Warping or damage from prolonged use of high or excessive heat or exposure to thermal shock is also not covered. Now, why did I say that the dishwasher safe thing was kind of interesting is because both of these companies say that their 
cookware is dishwasher safe. So it's interesting that they won't replace it if it's discolored or altered from being used in the dishwasher. Now, I will say, I have a made-in pot and I did run it through the dishwasher and it changed a bit. And so I messaged them, this was about a year ago, and said, hey, I did run it through the dishwasher on the website it says it was dishwasher safe, blah, 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 blah. And it just changed in color. And they said, yes, that can happen, absolutely, but it doesn't affect the performance of the pan. And I can attest, we use that pot quite a lot over the last year. It performs just fine every single time we go to use it. We don't wash it in the dishwasher, however, anymore. DeMeyer's warranty is a bit harder to find since it's lumped in with Zwilling Company's main warranty for almost all of their products. But I will say, I have had Henkel's knives, which were a wedding present to us almost 10 years ago, and they have replaced our knives without question for free twice. And in fact, on that second warranty claim, they upgraded us to a better knife. So I would say that they would honor, the, honor their warranty, and that was even before I had a YouTube channel. So you can't say that, well, you're an influencer, they replaced it because of that. No, they replaced it all through Facebook messaging. So that's cool. On to manufacturing place of origin. This is important to me. It may not be as important to you, and I totally understand that. Heritage Steel, 100% made in the USA. Some of the materials may be sourced from outside the USA, but they are 100% handmade in the US. Not made by hand, they do use machines, but like, you know, hands are running those machines. All clad is made in the USA. However, their lids and handles are made in China. With made in, they do have a lot of products that are made in the USA, some made in France. Their stainless steel line, like this one, made in Italy. De Meyer is all made in Belgium, which is definitely on my list of travel plans. For weight and ergonomics, I'm going to stick mainly with comparing Made In and Heritage Steel because I don't have the other brands, so I'm not going to try to lie to you and judge by what other people have said on YouTube. I'm gonna go by my own experience here. Both of these brands are lightweight, but feel very solid when held in your hand. The handles are even a little bit similar with the handles of the Made In having a little bit more of a taper inward towards the pan itself, but the outward is not too wide for, I mean, I don't have huge hands. This is easily held and grabbed. And both of the pans, even when lit on fire, the handles stay very cool. More on that in a hot minute. Now for weight, I'm only gonna compare the 12 inch skillet because the 12 inch skillet is probably the most used pan in any kitchen or in any restaurant for that matter. But tell me in the comments what your go-to size pan or skillet or frying pan or saucepan, whatever it is, tell me what your favorite pan that you own is in the comments. Max temps. This may be important to you depending on how you like to cook and what kind of foods you like to cook. And all of the pans in this comparison are induction safe, gas stove safe, and electric range safe. Need a drink. Heritage Steel and Made In are both family owned. That's important to me because my parents have owned their business for the last 45 years. I own my own business. All Clad started off in Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania, and which is just south of Pittsburgh. Now they started off as a family owned company, but then were sold to a French conglomerate called Group SEB. I don't know. Now, is still a great company, still have a good reputation, still make incredible products. Now DeMeyer, like I mentioned earlier with the knives, they are owned by the Zwilling Group. Henkel's is one of those other brands. I still use those knives today. Not as much anymore since I have my Messermeister knives. Totally different topic for a whole nother video though. But good company with a very good reputation and long history. Now, maybe the most important part, how's the freaking food? I can honestly tell you, that the first time my wife and I cooked on the Heritage Steel pans, there was a flavor component that we had been missing for the last 18, 19 months while using Hexclad. The crust, the Maillard effect, the golden brown, whatever you wanna call it, that we are getting out of these pans for our food is unparalleled. I, it's, it's crazy to me. Like the first time I made some eggs in this fry pan, I flipped them over and they were perfectly golden brown crusted, which is the way I like them. Some people don't like a little crispiness on their eggs, but that's the way I like mine. And I mean, compared to the hex clad ones, no, there is no comparison. They were way better out of, sorry. They were way better out of this pan. And also in the care section, you'll find that there are ways to make your stainless steel cookware very nonstick and efficient. 
It's just absolutely amazing. And, and quite honestly, one of those aha moments that brought me back to the restaurant kitchens from 20 years ago when I worked there. It's like, why did I ever stray away, you know? But we live and learn, at least, at least we hope to. I have. Now that we have these incredible pots and pans, we want, and quite frankly, we know that they will last forever. And this is how we're caring for them. Most of the ones that I've gone over today will say that they're dishwasher safe. However, like I mentioned in the warranty section, some won't cover it if you do put them in the dishwasher. But like I also mentioned, it's not going to affect their performance when cooking with them. So, so just two odd little caveats to, to keep in mind. Just like the made in pot, we don't put this in the dishwasher anymore. And the same goes for our heritage steel pans and pots. We hand wash them with soap and water. And we also have these incredible sponges from Heritage Steel that are forever sponges. They've replaced every sponge we have in our house. They're freaking awesome. I never thought I'd geek out about a sponge before, but I absolutely love these sponges. They have a, they have a really soft side for polishing and then a little bit more of a coarse, soft metal side for, for scraping off, you know, crusted bits and stuff. But once the sponge starts to get a little nasty, you can just throw it in the top rack of the dishwasher or in your washing machine and it'll come out pretty much brand new after that. And I never, I don't know why I never thought that a forever sponge was an idea, but I'll say forever sponge because I'm not sure how it'll last. I've only had it for a month right now, but I've washed it three times so far and it's come out perfect every single time. So we'll see how long that lasts. I'll put that in another little, maybe YouTube short, six months or a year from now to see how long that sponge lasts. And for what it's worth, it does come out better from the washing machine, primarily because of the spin cycle is able to remove the water that the sponge soaks up during the cleaning process. The dishwasher doesn't have that. So when you pull your sponge out of the dishwasher, it's gonna be filled with water. You just gotta squeeze it out. And so everything we make with our new pots and pans pretty much gets a pan sauce now because yeah, pan sauces are awesome. They make your dinner taste incredible. So why not? But making a pan sauce after you've cooked your protein will help deglaze the pot or the pan from all those little, from all the fond at the bottom, those delicious little crispy bits of the proteins that you just cooked. So those will go into your sauce, adding so much more flavor and depth to your actual sauce. How many times do I say sauce? Saucy. And then if there are moments where you get some food stuck on your pan, and on it, for us so far, they have scraped off very easily just with a silicone spatula or with a wooden spoon. That's what we use to do all of our cooking now. And it's wonderful. Just be careful if you're using a metal, metal utensil on your, your, your stainless steel. Stainless steel is actually kind of soft and it will scratch. It's not gonna affect the performance, but just, you know, if you're gonna use a whisk, you might wanna use a silicone whisk. And then after we scrape off any mess that was still stuck on the pans, we use that awesome sponge and it cleans up everything perfectly fine. And then pretty much once a week, we use the stainless steel polish or cleaner from Heritage Steel and polishes our pans up really nice and beautiful. They look brand new almost every single time. So uh, we do that once a week or if we get some stains on our pots and pans, it cleans it up really nicely even after a holy shit moment like this. This was yesterday. Let me explain. I was videoing some B-roll for a grill that I'm creating a review for. It was only like 20 degrees outside, so very it's very cold. It's not real windy, so it was just, just really cold air. So I had this skillet sitting on the side burner of the grill, warming up. And I had the burner on medium low. And after about four minutes, I was going to add some butter and some garlic and some thyme for a brown butter pan sauce that I was gonna put over the pork chops that I was cooking. And you'll see that video coming up soon. And when I slid the butter in, and this is, this is one of those moments where it's like temperature of air, heat on the bottom, too hot, and a cooking fat. And if you ever put a cooking fat like butter or oil in a hot pan and those two temperature ranges are very different. Uh, this pan got a lot hotter than I expected it to from that little side burner. And when I saw the steam and the, the smoke turn white, I was like, shit, this is gonna catch on fire. And it just burst into fire. And what happens is this is called misting. Basically the fat hits the pan, rises above, and then the water in the fat comes out and then causes it to ignite. Basically, I hope I'm explaining that well, but this is this can happen in your kitchen or it can happen outside like it just did. Since I was outside, I just tossed the butter out of the pan and blew it out. If it happens in your house, not the best scenario. If this happens in your house, hopefully you've got a fire extinguisher in your kitchen or baking powder. 
but I cleaned it with soap and water with that magical sponge. This is, like I said, that was yesterday. And then I used the stainless steel polish and cleanser in a soft metal sponge that we got from Heritage. This pan looks just like it did before I ignited a fire on it. And I was actually quite concerned. I was like, damn, I'm doing that review video tomorrow. And I just totally scorched this pan. Now, it looks awesome. It cleaned up very, very nice. Uh, so no complaints there. So if that happens, if you scorch your pans, just know that they are able to be brought back. At least in my experience with this one, that is the case. And finally, but stick around after I tell you all this because I wanna go over Danny's answers to all of my questions. We chose Heritage Steel for the following reasons. They're family owned. They're 100% made in the USA. The transparency in their messaging, in their marketing, and on their website was so clear. No marketing terms, no crazy claims of what it can and can't do. It's just, this is good ass cookware, okay? And we think you'll like it. Like, I like that messaging. That's direct and to the point, and I appreciate that. And like I said, their company was started in 1983, the same year my parents created their company. I was like, that's a sign. Let's just go with these. So thank you to everyone that recommended Heritage Steel, and all the other ones to get me going on my research list. You helped a lot, and I hope this video helps you a lot too. If it did, I'd be so humbled if you would season that like button heavily, and of course, take a big bite out of that subscribe button if you haven't already. But don't go away yet. Like I said in the beginning, I reached out to Heritage, and Danny responded. Here are his answers to some of my questions. So first, I asked him in my research I came across all of these companies and they pretty much all offer a non-stick solution. So I asked him, why have you guys decided not to provide one of those solutions? I'm just gonna read his answers, okay? Non-stick pans are super popular in the marketplace, no question. We've made the decision not to make it part of our product offerings for two main reasons, sustainable manufacturing and respect for our customers. Sustainable manufacturing, regardless of any possible health effects that may occur, from cooking with PTFE based or other types of nonstick cookware, we know that the widespread use of PFAs in manufacturing is really bad for the environment. So we don't wanna be part of it contributing to that problem. Okay, admirable. And number two, respect for our customers. The not so secret thing about nonstick cookware is that it will degrade over time. It might be a couple months or it might be a couple of years, but they're bound to become less useful and effective over time. We think that home cooks don't actually need this nonstick crutch in their kitchen. And if they spend a bit of time learning the way to cook in better forms of cookware, stainless steel, carbon steel, cast iron, they'll be better, they'll be far better off in the long run. It feels like sort of a scam that nonstick cookware manufacturers know they're selling a product with planned obsolescence and customers should have to rebuy their pots and pans every couple of years. Bingo, buddy. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Okay, next question. You have your titanium line, but you just added the Eater branded line as well. Why did you add that line and why did you choose to partner with Eater for it? He said, our 316 Ti, that's the titanium line, product line has always been a bit of a specialty product line with materials and methods that make it more expensive to make than our competitors. So the Eater line is meant to be a bit cheaper and easier to make. 304 steel surface is less expensive to source. Brush surface is less labor intensive, but still offer a really premium quality level of product. So the idea in this line was to make the best quality we can for the cheapest practical price, all while still having a really high quality standards and make it here in the US. Cool. Eater was a great partner for this goal. If you don't know what Eater is, I'll, I'll link to their website down below. You can check them out. Eater was a great partner for this goal because while we know we offer a great product, we haven't always been very a very well known as a brand. Uh, working with Eater provided great reach into the audience of dedicated cooks who would make benefit from the products that we make, but, be, but maybe actually haven't heard of us, like me. Further, Eater is looking to expand their coverage more into home cooking in the future, and we're happy to be a part of that. So that's cool. Next question. What would you say the most difficult choice is when it comes to choosing high quality cookware? Danny says, I think education is really important. Being deep in the weeds of cookware stuff for years, it's easy to take for granted just how much specialty knowledge is required to understand the basic differences among types of cookware and how they're best used. The market is dominated by the idea of get a big old set of cookware for 150 bucks. 
which is an understandable choice to make if you haven't sat down to do some research around what's actually the best long-term choice. Once you've made the choice to invest into high quality cookware, there's still a bunch of options available. We've tried to differentiate ourselves by offering the best value out there for a premium quality option. The Eater series is a very aggressively priced given the quality of what we're offering. If there's one thing you want people to know about Heritage Steel as a company and as a cookware product, what would it be? And Danny says, we're just a small team of dedicated people trying, to, trying our best to make this whole US manufacturing thing work in today's world. The idea is pretty simple. Good products made by good people offered at a good price. Thank you, Danny, for answering all of these questions. Well, my friends, thank you so much for going on this journey with me. And I hope you continue to go along with me. I actually have so much more to tell you over the next coming months. As always, I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.